Good evening, fellow citizens of the internet. I have been waiting to do this video on choosing parents for amateur apple breeding until I had a little collection of the apples that I've been using. This isn't all of them, but this is uh, what's ripe right now in this season, which is early October, about the first week in October. So my main criteria for choosing apples has been flavor, uh, flavor and texture, just overall um, dessert quality. There are a lot of other considerations. So there's disease resistance, there's keeping ability, um, there's growth habits, there's season. And I do choose also for season and storing capacity like uh, Gold Rush and um, a, few, a few other real late apples that I've chosen just because they're really late. But overall, what I do in my head, and you know, I'm not, I'm not recommending that you do what I do because um, I haven't ap approached my choice of parents in a very sophisticated manner. I'm not doing research on things like gene uh, disease resistance or uh, genetic dominance, like dominant traits and stuff like that. I haven't done much research at all. So for me, it's just about seeing what I can accomplish with flavor and hoping the rest of it kind of works itself out. Often the big breeding projects, uh, flavor isn't, is far from the first thing on the list. So after the apple meets all these other criteria, um, like disease resistance and keeping and shipping and good looks and all that, kind of flavor is usually in tow near the end, if not last. So yeah, flavor is kind of what it's about for me. That's the fun part. And I do this because um, I don't do it have like a huge sense of responsibility. Although I think it's a really cool thing to do and that more people should do it. And in a way we do have a responsibility, but I mostly do it because it's fun. And for me, it's all about the flavor. So let's talk about a few of these apples here. Um, let's start with this one. This is Cherry Cox. And that's C-O-X Cox, Cherry Cox. It is a sport of Cox's Orange Pippin. And what a sport is, is it means that one bud on a Cox's Orange Pippin tree mutated one time and produced a, a different fruit. It definitely has some characteristics in common with Cox's Orange Pippin, but unlike Cox's Orange Pippin, it does well in my climate. I have not grown a Cox's Orange Pippin fruit. And this, keep in mind that this is often claimed to be the best apple, dessert apple in the world that was even worth finishing. But Cherry Cox does really well here. In a good year, it has a strong cherry flavor, uh, reminiscent of cherry cough drops almost, but in a good way. And also just other complex fruity flavors. It's got a good acid sugar balance. It can go on, a little on the acid side, but overall it's excellent eating. It doesn't keep very well, but the cherry flavor is really what I'm after with this apple. And also, I use a lot of red-fleshed apples in breeding. In fact, most of my crosses have been red-fleshed apples with other dessert apples that I consider to be exceptional, like cherry cocks. And the red-fleshed apples often have a lot of berry flavor because the red pigment actually has that, is, is that flavor, I think. It's the, that kind of berry flavor. So I'm just thinking, you know, berries and cherries, it just sounds like a good mix. So that's why I use this one. This is Rubinette. This is a cross between Cox's Orange Pippin and something else, I don't remember what. It has a good sugar acid balance. It's a really good apple, but I've used it in the past, but I'm not gonna use it anymore just because it hasn't been doing, it hasn't wowed me in the last um, few growing seasons. King David, beautiful King David. Look at this apple. Look how dark red that is. It's a beautiful apple. It keeps well. The polish is amazing. I don't put good looks first on the list by any means, but on the other hand, who doesn't want to breed a delicious apple that looks awesome too? Look at that, beautiful apple. It has a high sugar content. When it really gets ripe, the sugars pour on. It has an extremely rich flavor. There's some red apple type of flavor, what I would call red apple flavor but it's also spicy and extremely rich and it what it is it's almost like eating cider like slightly spiced cider um, when i say cider i mean apple juice not not hard cider um, but it's a it's a term that people use a lot they say an apple tastes cidery they really mean that it tastes like apple juice at least i do so um 
just an exceptional apple overall. Like I said, it keeps well. What's not to like? This, this apple is pretty remarkable. Uh, so I've used that as well. Sweet 16. Wow. What to say about Sweet 16? Um, I just go back and forth on this apple constantly. It, it can be so strongly flavored that it's almost like um, it's over. It's just too much. Or it's too gimmicky or something or too too many disparate flavors trying to compete at once. It's probably the most flavorful or at least intensely in your face flavored apple I've ever eaten. But when it starts to go over ripe, it's it's just uh, it's nasty. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's just no good um, flavors. Um, Anise, almond, cherry, uh, just kind of general candy-like flavors. Yeah, crazy flavors. So I'm interested in getting some of these flavors be because there's just so many of them and they're so intense and injecting them into other apples. And this year I've started crossing more dessert apples that aren't red flesh. For instance, I crossed um, cherry cox with this one, with Sweet 16, because they both have this cherry kind of flavor, and I thought maybe uh, crossing the two of them would reinforce that flavor and bring it out more, because it's one of my f favorite flavors to run into in an apple is cherry. So I think I'll use this some more this year. Um, I've also crossed it with Wixen. I crossed it with King David, so yeah. Okay, Wixen. Oh, Wixen, what to say about Wixen? This apple is in a class by itself. That doesn't mean, I don't mean to say that it's better than every other apple because people, someone just asked me a couple days ago, they're like, what is your favorite apple? And I just, you know, I'm like, you can't really do that. It, you, you, need, you need at least a top five list because there are so many varieties and flavors. Left. Plus, you can't eat, ap eat the same apples all through the year. So it's more like, what's your favorite in this season? Maybe. But even then... To compare all these together, um, yeah, they're just different. So, Wixen is kind of in a class all its own. It can get allegedly up to 25% sugar, which is unheard of, crazy, crazy sweet for an apple. It is extremely flavorful. It's like someone took a full-sized apple and just crushed all the flavor and sugar down into this little package. And I believe that's a phenomenon in apples and in other things where we get bigger and bigger and the flavors are often diluted in the process. I don't know how to say what it tastes like. I can never describe it. I call it the Wixen thing. It is almost not even a flavor, but more like either a mouthfeel or a quality of some kind. A lot of people will say champagne. They'll mention champagne or that it's effervescent, sparkly. It almost has like um, a savory flavor in there, uh, maybe something like what people call umame. Uh, hard to explain. I'm really into using this. I think people should grow seeds from this, even if it's not intentionally crossed with anything else. This apple holds the genetic base for some amazing apples. I'm, I'm just sure of that. So I've used it a lot. I'm going to continue to use it. I've mixed it with all kinds of stuff and I will probably end up back mixing some of those together to reinforce the, the wicks and traits in those apples. And again, those are extremely high sugar, intensely rich flavor, that weird effervescent quality that is not only in Wixen, um, but it's strongest in Wixen. It also is in the two crabs that I reviewed this summer, early summer in July called, um, called Trailman and Centennial. And it's in some other Etter apples that were salvaged from Etter's Experimental Orchards by Green Mantle Nursery. They sell them as crabs, but most of them are a little on the large side to be called a crab. Uh, but they also have that same quality. So, amazing, amazing apple. All right, so I'm gonna, these are the only ones I have here, so I'm just gonna run through my list real quick and tell you some other apples that I use. And don't, don't just use this as the criteria, you know, choose your own, your own apples. Although, you know, this could give you some places to start. I really think, really, really think that more people, I and mean, we should have like uh, an unorganized, you know, Wixen breeding effort, I, I think, amongst all the apple enthusiasts, because it's just so, it's such a promising genetic base to work from.
Okay, so here's some other apples that I've used. Golden russet. Hands down the best russet I have ever eaten. I think it is a highly underrated apple that should be grown more. Problem with golden russet is it's not very grower friendly. It's super rangy and twiggy and it doesn't bear that much. Um, maybe like Roxbury russet and Ashmead's kernel both bear a lot more. Um, but a flavor, uh, just amazing symphony of flavors and high, high intensity, high sugar. Uh, just a remarkable, remarkable apple. So I've used that mixed with red fleshed apples. Gold Rush is a more recent breeding effort. Um, not recent, I think it's maybe from the 70s or something. And it is a golden delicious offspring that is a really, really good keeper. So it keeps super long, um, good texture, good flavor. Catherine, which is another Albert Etter apple. If you don't know who Albert Etter is, uh, Google it. I don't have time to explain it right now, but um, he bred Wixen. Uh, he also bred Catherine. Catherine is a late hanging apple. At least what I have labeled as Catherine. I just got some other scions and grafted those and they look a lot different. So one of them may be mislabeled, but what I'm calling Catherine is a late hanging apple, excellent texture, super juicy, um, just a delicious, easy eating late apple. I pick those off the tree in December. Etter 713, okay, here's some Etter red fleshed apples and I'm gonna use the number denominations given to them by Green Mantle Nursery. They went into Albert Etter's uh, experimental orchards, which were, were abandoned, found a bunch of apples, uh, gave them trademark names, which means that if you use the trademark name, you owe them money, basically. Um, but they also gave them number designations, uh, which is kind of lame, but that's another story. So uh, Etter 713, an intensely red fleshed apple, I would say dark, dark pink. Um, very intense flavors of like fruit punch uh, and berries, uh, just outstanding genes. But most of these red fleshed apples could use improvement. And I'll, I'll probably do, I'm gonna do another video just on the red fleshed apples, so I'll get into that later. But suffice to say for now, that they have some amazing qualities, um, but few of them are really excellent dessert apples. And that's, that's like the, that's the goal is to make them into excellent dessert apples or make something with them. Um, at our 811, deep red, velvety flesh. Um, at our 79 is an excellent dessert apple. It has an outstanding texture, mild um, honey-like flavors, a little bit of the red flesh flavor but not as much as the other ones because it's not as red fleshed. Um, it will be more like tinged pink uh, from the outside, like a, a bunch of it will be tinged pink, but it just doesn't have the intensity of flavor, but it's also the best eating apple out of the lot. Um, it's just really an outstanding apple. It also hangs late, so you can pick that one off the tree. It's ready in December, which is pretty cool. Newton Pippin, probably most often said to be the very best American apple. Um, Chestnut crab. Early, I reviewed this apple in the summer, so you could see my uh, comparing seven early apples video for that one. It's similar to Wixen in its um, intensity of flavor. It has some of that kind of crab quality, but no crabbiness, no like bitter crabbiness at all. A really outstanding apple, and it's early. It ripens in August. Williams Pride, I'm um, really into that one right now. It turns out that it has some red flesh too. I also compared that one this summer so you can see that same video. Um, I'm pretty excited about that one. It's just an exceptional apple for an early apple, but I would just say it's just a really good eating apple at any season. And, and to be able to say that is saying a lot. So that one's definitely gonna get used more this year. Lady Williams, Lady Williams is a very interesting apple. It ripens here on February 1st. That is exceptionally late, and it's a very good apple. It's just, uh, it's a good eating apple. It's very firm, pretty, pretty heavy and dense. It gets a nice high sugar content. It stores well. Um, it is the parent, or one of the parents of Crips Pink, also known as Pink Lady. And um, that's probably, in my opinion, the best grocery store apple, the most consistently good grocery store apple that I've had. And not that I eat very many of them, but, um, yeah, if I do, I, I always buy Pink Lady because it's it's almost always at least edible, and I'm so picky that you know if I start an apple and I don't like it, I don't I never finish it. So, so those are the apples I've used.
and uh, again you know don't don't just use the same ones I use but I really would encourage you to pick pick your parent apples and give it some thought you know definitely use stuff that you like because the whole point of this is to improve the general quality of apples and kind of go in new directions in terms of quality and flavors. So if you just pick some random grocery store apple that's kind of so-so and grow it, you don't know what pollinated it, you may or may not get something good. Um, it's pretty easy and pretty fun to pollinate your own blossoms and you can see the rest of this series. There's a playlist that I'm keeping with all the, all the videos in this series which will show you how to breed apples from start to finish and you can kind of do that at, at multiple different levels. You know, I'm kind of in the mid-range where I'm not doing my parent selection very carefully, but I'm, you know, I'm growing a bunch of them and I'm growing them out in rows and stuff like that. But it could be as simple as you just planting a seed from something you really like, grafting it on an apple tree and just letting it grow until it makes fruit. So I think that's about it. And the next video will be on collecting the seeds um, from the apples that I pollinated, hand pollinated earlier this spring. So in the meantime, think about what apples you might want to collect or use as parents so that you too can be a citizen breeder. <laughs>